Hello, and welcome to another Recommend or Not. Recommend or Not. Yeah. Uh, so, I've been playing Until Dawn. Until Dawn. That yeah. sounds like a... That's supposed to be a scary game, isn't it? It is, it is a scary game, and mm. basically you get to be Hayden Panettiere in the clingy towel. So recommend already, then? Recommended. Yeah. Recommended, Just yeah. there. Yeah, just done. All right, let's... So, beyond that one unit-selling aspect, because it would be a unit-selling aspect, really, wouldn't it? For... I, so I, would, I would buy a game just because of that. Many units would be interested many, in many, that unit-selling many aspect. Units, many units. Um, so for those, those that don't know, Until Dawn's a teen horror movie. Eight teenagers go up to an isolated cabin on a mountain to commemorate the anniversary of the disappearance of two of their friends on that very same mountain. Are they going there because their friends disappeared and died? Like, like... They go, they're going there to console the brother of the two, because there's two sisters, yeah. and they're twins, and the, the brother owns the cabin, Okay. and so he's got everyone there to have, a, have their annual get-together. Well, I don't understand, right? Because you know like how sometimes in real life, when like, a married couple will be together for a while and then like a wife dies and then the husband can't live in that house anymore so he has to sell it because of the memories yeah. or like when a child dies and then they get rid of the house so they yeah. move because yeah. they can't like yeah let's go for a holiday in a ski resort where my two sisters disappeared and are presumably dead there's also a disused mine and abandoned sanitarium <laughs> in the cabin's backyard as there, as there usually is yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. so it's it's every single teen horror film you've ever seen in your life <laughs> like just all mashed into one yeah are they hillbillies Quite possibly. They look like fucking ill bullies. So, yeah, basically, it's stupid kids making stupid decisions. Because that that's not a very good decision, is it, really? And that's what stupid kids do. Yeah, that is what stupid kids do. Um, but not all the decisions need be stupid. Unless you feel like punishing a bunch of teenagers. And um, punish they would be, because it's fucking brutal. Mm. It is a brutal, brutal game. The, the you, pun- just, you just showed me one. Yeah, the punishments. That made me um, the, the cringe. Pun- the punishments are terrible. I didn't like uh, it. It... it but the worst thing is it focuses on making you form an emotional attachment to the characters so it's worse when you ki- when, when someone dies if you like them those expecting survival horror by way of Resident Evil or Silent Hill will be disappointed um, it does do an excellent job in creating seriously claustrophobic environments and sometimes is reminiscent of those horror titles but it's something else entirely yeah it's not really a horror it's not really um, a survival horror game like action oriented no. it's, it's more like no. um, an interactive horror movie where, yeah. where you are the director and you make choices yeah it's, but, it's exactly but you don't know the full outcome so it's like it's like a yeah it's like you've got you've got a script in front of you it's like those um, well it's no it's like it's like a choose books. your own choose, choose your, your own, own adventure, adventure book. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, exa- that's pretty much what it is or it's like a script but like every time you get to the next page and the decision... The page changes. The page is, is like basically written in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty much what it is. It is the most interactive yeah. uh, it, game I've ever played. It's like a Quantic Dream game, but better. Oh, much better. Yeah. Much better. It you know, it shits all over it. Mm. it Quantic Dream is better than Quantic Dream. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's not survival horror in the traditional sense. You do pick up items and weapons along the way, but you don't pick up ammo or health or anything like that. There isn't even health. Um, you make a wrong decision and you're dead. That's it. You can't prepare what's from around the corner because there's nothing to prepare with. And quick time events, all the action, mm-hmm. like running from danger or running to help someone, is told through these quick time events. They're not for everyone. Um, I'm not a particular fan. There are there have been some games where I like the quick time events in them, uh, and this one, this is one of them. I really like the quick time events in this because I don't know. It doesn't feel like. They're just filling in space. From what I've seen of the little you've shown me and what I, and the little I've played, they seem very um, natural for yeah. the game. They they yes, don't seem it. added in like some games do. Yeah, um, like it, like mash this button and then all like that. They they're a lot more subtle. Other other games, it's like they it's like they're being lazy mm. by just because like the one that sticks in my mind is the final boss in um, Two Rock for the three sixty and PS three. You're the only one who knows that. Well, Nobody played that game. Well, the guy, the guy you're, that you're after in that it, the t- entire final boss fight is done but through quick time, and oh, it's just spoiler. like, and it's just like they couldn't. Spoilers. Well, are you gonna play Two Rock? I might. You're not. I might. No one's gonna play Two Rock, <laughs> but it's told entirely through quick time event, and that was just lazy. Well, heavy rain, is heavy rain like, is along the same lines, isn't it? That, yeah, that heavily yeah. relies on quick time, yeah. but they're all stupid ones like move the analog stick up and then swirl it up and around, yeah, and across, and really then press L two R one R two up and X at the same time, and it just it, it to a but, point it gets too much. Yeah, and the decisions in like 
heavy rain were kind of didn't really do much um in in i guess like minor i mean the, the story is heading towards a conclusion and only minorly changes yeah yeah um but with this game the they use what, what they call the butterfly effect and that's what they call their decision tree and it is it is huge i can't put it any other way it's massive it allows for many 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 outcomes um each butterfly that comes up on screen a new little menu uh each butterfly is a decision and the decisions that you make are on its wings so you pick a decision that you've made and it shows what decision you made and the outcomes of that and it can trickle down um for me i was playing as mike and i did brave things and said brave things to and in front of jess and it continued to impress her to the point where you know you get some or you almost you almost get some you almost have sex yeah but sometimes there's no way of telling where a decision might take you. We've you know, seen that. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, uh, there are there are ways of predicting some future events through little totems that you find. Um, when you explore the various areas in the game, you can find little Native American totems which represent different things like death, danger, and fortune. Um, I think there's there's more, but I can't remember what they are. On, After you pick them up. And it's because it shows you like a two second glimpse. Yeah. After you pick them up, does it tell you which one it is? Does it tell you this is a fortune one? Does yes. it tell you? Yeah. Right. Okay. When, when you pick it up, um, there's a little color code on, on right. the actual totem. But when you go into your totem menu. Because I know that you picked up a totem and it showed you a glimpse and it got to that point and you didn't listen to the totem. You didn't do what the totem no. showed you. No. But did you know, did you just like forget or did you not want to check or. What? Well, like what that totem the show no, I've, the I've, I've, I message. forgot I forgot what kind of totem it was right, okay. but you can check one of the good things about this is that you so can so that was just your mistake rather than oh yeah that was, the, that was the, me right, okay. that was all okay. me okay. One of the, but one of the good things is, is if you want to check you can pause it at any time even um, during the choices even during the choices so you can be standing there making a decision because yeah. a lot of the choices aren't uh, time based mm. there are time based ones but they're do not do I those... shoot Jimmy or Joey yeah oh no those... what, do the, what do the totems tell me <laughs> yeah, like, like you said each totem you pick up gives you like a two second sort of glimpse like you see a little clip of a future event that might happen and depending on how you play the game you know it could happen and it might not happen there's also no save points like no restart chapter or load last checkpoint options at all. It's all continuous and auto save, so it's, yeah. it's you know it, it it is it is as it is, and it keeps on going as it yeah. is. Yeah, you're stuck with what decisions you make. There's mm. unless you start a new game, right. you you are you are stuck with it. Um, yeah, I actually quite like it to be honest. It makes the game more tense. The risk is greater because you can't if you don't like an outcome, you can't just load your last save. You know? Yeah, restart, try better. Yeah, yeah. No. There's, there's none of that. And the it, only way you could do it is if you had an uploaded save and then delete your local save yeah, and then like, download. That's, that's like that's, way too much work to that's redo. Too much, yeah. too much work. I bet, I bet people really... do it though. I bet people do it. Oh, that's, I bet. Just, that's petty though. That's yeah, petty. I bet people live do with it. the decisions you make. Right, the horror of this game, right, the horror aspect of it. It's a really creepy game, as you saw. I did see, yeah. It's very atmospheric. It is very atmospheric. I've been playing it exclusively with headphones, and I'm really glad I did. The sound design is fantastic. It does a really good job of immersing you in, in this really creepy world, but the scares are as you would expect from any teen horror film. They are just cheap jump scares. Well, from what I've seen, they're jump scares and go. There, there are genuinely creepy and scary moments, mm. like you saw, um, but there are a lot of just jump scares with something just jumping into frame and with a loud noise a couple of those got me yeah and no I, I, I jump as well but mm. that's just because I jump at loud noises I, I don't like jump scares like that because I, fi I find them I fi it's just unimaginative they can be fun and there are moments in the game where they are fun mm. um, but it's not it's not for everyone with the visuals I, I don't really, really need to say anything all people just gotta do is just they like, right? look I mean, at it for for a company that have only ever really worked on P uh, PSP games. Um, yeah, they've it, done it, an outstanding it, job. I mean, the PSP games they made were very, you know, very, very good. technically like they looked good as well. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. And it, it's clear that they were doing some kind of magic. <laughs> yeah, just, like they, is... they, yeah. I mean, they they know what they're doing. 
towards the company they've definitely proven the track they got a good track record yeah they do they really do and it's clear they know what they're doing yeah and it's clear they love horror movies as well oh yeah you, you can, can, you can see, see you can see you can see that they've mm. done not only have they done their research but you can see that they just fucking they love it mm. they love this stuff um, yeah so like I said the light and shadow effects in this game are outstanding like I've yeah. very rarely seen shadows and light in a game as good as this yeah, no, I've, I've, I've the bits when you with the, with the torch. Yeah, because you, you can, can control just, you can independently. Control I mean, the torch. it's almost like fixed camera for certain oh, it, scenes. It is, um, it is fixed camera. The entire thing. Uh, is oh fixed right, camera. yeah, but you can move the camera slightly, like Resident Evil Four. It feels like where you can move the camera very slightly with yeah. the analog stick. Yeah. But when you do that, the torch moves with it, and you like you see their arms going around with it. It's it's very effective. It's yeah. very good. And the shadows as well, mm. like serve to. They serve to ramp up the creepy a bit because. Mm. Like you, you see shadows moving across the side, across the room, because you've moved, but you don't think it's because of what you moved. It just looks mm. like something else. And I, see, I they're re, they're really good, and the character models, like you said, fantastic. And environments, yeah, like fantastic. The, wood, the woods especially, and the snow. Yeah, the snow is brilliant. People playing this who want a horror game that they can get instant satisfaction from. Uh, this this isn't one of those games at all. It's a slow game for yeah. two for two reasons. It's a, it's a fairly slow burner in terms of story and horror. At the beginning, you play for a while, and there, there are little things, little mm-hmm. things happen, but nothing major. Um, but it builds up and builds up and builds up, and then you know, shit starts happening. But the second reason that it's slow is, a, in a more literal sense, it's, it's slow, or rather, you are. Because mm. your characters can walk, or they can walk a bit faster. Mm. That's, that's it. There's no running involved. Outside of quick time events, um, it does it does it does make the, the game a bit more tense mm. um, and, make, and more creepy, and it gives you time to get absorbed in the environment that you're in. The, the um, way I like to think about it with stuff like that is like, how often do you run in your normal day? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess like if you be if like you've just escaped the madman, like this I is, I would have a hot trot on. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't just I mean. like pace it's, slowly. It's, but. It can get a bit tedious, like. Like when when your girlfriend's just been dragged through a mine by something, you know, less than wholesome. All you can do is walk after her. No, mm-hmm. you wouldn't. Skip around. Like. I guess. I guess. It gets annoying in that sense because you want to speed up. You want to be like, you want to get going. Mm. And like you said, when you get just just chased through through a house by a maniac. Yeah. You're gonna be fucking. You're gonna be jogging a bit, aren't you? Yeah, I'd have a jog on. Yeah. <laughs> and the writing as well is a little bit cheesy. These, I think, these are my two biggest. From what I've seen, it's cheesy, but it's deliberately like in a, that. In a horror movie sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They they've written for their genre. Oh yeah, which... absolutely, and they've and they've done it well. Mm. You know, if if this was a, an actual horror film, it would be it would be good. It's it's like in Cabin in the Woods when you know not to spoil Cabin in the Woods. It's been out for like five years, but when they when they they start getting under the the whatever the cabin's influence and they start becoming their stereotypes and they become the stereotype and their dialogue becomes more yeah. cheesy because yeah. they are becoming the stereotype becoming in the, in the, trope, in the yeah. This, yeah with the writing it is cheesy in that sort of horror movie mm. sense but as well this, this the slang annoys me mm. like slang in general get, gets on my nerves mm. but when there's there was one bit when Emily um, Emily and Matt are going through something and they find something creepy and then Emily just says ugh unfollow mm. I'm like yeah yeah you're gonna die soon yeah, I'll, I'll see to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will personally see that you die just for that. It's like in um, I can't, I can't think of any examples, but I know when we started playing Revelations two and Moira started with it, I can't remember exactly what she said. I think she might have said like a maze balls or something. Oh yeah. And like life is strange. I know you haven't played that, but they the one of the main characters says hella all the time, oh. all the time, oh. all like 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 fifteen times an episode. I hate. I, yeah, it I becomes, know it's some. It becomes an issue for me. <laughs> yeah, slang slang gets annoying, especially when it's stuff like that. And like Matt, at one point, unless it's said like sarcastically, but it's not. No, not at all. It's it's not, not a hint of irony. No, it's earnest. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Earnest goes. And to there's, there's there's one bit with Matt. Um, something good happens, and he says A plus plus would buy again. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna die too. Yeah. And they did. Well, it's not a spoiler. No. No. I mean, like, you can't really I mean, that's spoil. in our video, I guess, so... Yeah. 
But the, the, <laughs> the thing about it is, you talk about it and you can't. There aren't really ways of spoiling it unless you spoil yeah, the story. I, yeah, itself. You, you know what? Yeah, that like in a game where every character can die, saying that your character's died is not a spoiler. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So in my in my game, Emily and Matt have fucking died. Yeah. As well, you, you've you've seen. We've, yeah, it was horrible. I didn't just, like it. Uh, uh, I didn't like it. No, you you were face. Oh, I didn't like you it. You were face. You were mortified. Oh. I'd, I've never seen you so shocked. It got me in the gentles. Right in the gentles. Didn't like it. <laughs> well, you wouldn't, would you? Not not in the gentles. What's funny is that this video is going to come out before that video where we make that joke. <laughs> yeah. So look out for that joke. Yeah. Look out for it. Cause it's there. <laughs> it's there. So overall, overall, I absolutely recommend this game, especially if you love horror. If you, if you if you like horror, if you know horror, mm. then you will absolutely like this game. Well, the thing is, I don't like horror. I, I guess I appreciate it for what it is. I, I don't really like it though. Yeah, it, as a rule, you don't me. you don't watch horror films. No, I don't. I, they they don't appeal to me. I mean, yeah. I, survival horror to a degree does, but uh, no. But this game, from what I've seen of it, I'm kind of in. Yeah, yeah. I'm into it. I like it. I, so recommend then recommend this game sweet if you haven't got it and you like horror go out and buy it yeah you, you what will, are you doing what are you doing you will not be sorry what are you doing yeah. if you don't like horror if you like horror and you don't got this what are you doing yeah just put put down the fucking cheese 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 put down Cheetos. the Doritos Cheetos what? aren't che a thing Cheeto in the UK they are absolutely are <laughs> you can buy them uh, anyway that's over we're over yeah, we're over we're now over. we're, we're done. done yeah Let's go buy it <laughs> And we'll... Uh, Buy it now. I don't know. Maybe in like six months we'll do another recommend or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it probably has been about that long. Yeah, God. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Recommend. Recommended. Bye. Bye then. Bye. Draw.